Yo, this is Deontay DeBron from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow One Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, let's get this review for Jamil Charlo, Jason taking on Jason Rosario. You know, appreciate everybody that followed us over to the Lion Killer podcast for that part. We went live for the first half of the fight with uh, Jamal and Derbachenko on my channel. Then me, Lion Killer, and Nate Campbell went over to Lion Killer's podcast right here on YouTube. So check it out, man. Appreciate it. We had uh, uh, Nate on last night and we had uh, Antoine Eccles on. He had some great stories, especially the story he didn't get to finish about how he sparring a 15 or 60 year old Keith Thurman and his coach <laughs> said that uh, if he hit Keith Thurman too hard that he was going to go to his car and get his gun. He was like, well, Keith was him like a grown man. So he had some really good stories last night. So I'm pretty sure Lion Killer left that uh, up if you want to watch that. It was some great stories on both halves, man. So uh, let's get to it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And um, yeah, man, we got a uh, Rosario last night, man. I think most people was kind of shocked that uh, Rosario got hit with that damn body shot, and he went. And that wasn't the first day. What's so funny about it last night? Even though the Charlo card was a uh, Sunday, that second card it ended Sunday Eastern Standard Time, but we gonna just count it as a Saturday fight. What's so funny if you didn't catch the uh, Josh Taylor fight with a Kansong? Um, a Kansong, he did the same thing Rosario did, you know, uh, Taylor hit him on the liver with a left hook and he went down and he, he just stayed down. He was, oh, oh, so, you know, I don't know who had the better body shot last night, Taylor on his mandatory or, or Charlo and Rosario, because you don't really see a jab to the body stop guys. But that fight, I think he stopped, he dropped Rosario in the first half and Rosario just can't take no shot. <laughs> That's just what it boiled down to. Rosario just can't take no shot, but body or to the head, but he can dish it. And, you know, that first knockdown, it woke, it worked Rosario up. And after that, that round, outside of the knockdowns, Rosario was pretty much dominating Charlo, in my opinion. He was hitting him to the head. He was hurting Charlo. You won't never see Charlo complain about head too low. He was, he was putting it on, on Charlo. He had Charlo uh, backing up, dancing complaining to the referee for like a few rounds and you know rosario was just punishing him to the head rosario was punishing him to the body um he was hurting charlo he, you could tell by charlo mannerisms his legs wasn't wasn't there and what it boiled down to is charlo had the better jaw he had the better uh, uh he had the better stamina and rosario pretty much controlled the fight and like i said before it was it's, it can rosario make charlo pay for those wild uh, uh, looping in, in, in those telegraph punches, and to be honest, he wasn't able to make him pay, and that was the difference in the fight, other than him can't taking a punch. But after the first round, he got dropped, he was dominating Charlo until the other knockdowns. He was on top of him. I like to see him use his jab just a little bit more, but he did everything he's supposed to do. He worked up and down, he had Charlo flustered, he was hurting him, he was putting it on him. The only dip, the biggest difference in the fight was when Charlo wind up with that wild shit, Rosario did not make him pay. When Charlo, when Charlo, Charlo, when Charlo load up with a shot he missed, you have to counter him. And I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a, a junior middleweight that can counter him. I don't think there's nobody that th that's there that's skilled enough to take advantage of that. If you counter him, Rosario, if not, Rosario was able to counter, Rosario would have stopped Charlo last night, but he wasn't. You know when Charlo wind up and he threw those those wild shots. Rosario either dipped sometimes or he stood there like this and he covered up and that's why he got dropped he didn't have he if he had a chin you know it would have been a different fight last night or he was able to counter Charlo and take advantage of those wild shots he didn't Charlo telegraphed his shots and it was just a difference of you know could Rosario make him pay or could Rosario cover up or dip and take the punch and a lot of and most of the times when Charlo was winning rounds the difference was he couldn't take the punch the difference was the hand speed and Rosario kind of, he kind of stopped the hand speed. He was hurting Charlo, pushing him back, standing in his wheelhouse. The difference was he just couldn't take the, he couldn't take the power and he couldn't counter Charlo. You know, if he was able to counter Charlo with his power, he would have knocked him out. He hurt Charlo every time he touched him to the body, to the head, 
every time he touched Charlo, he was dominating the fight. If the knockdowns didn't happen, I know if it was a fifth, we all be drunk. If the knockdowns didn't happen, this this fight this fight would have been a domination by Rosario. He didn't lose too many too many spots in this fight. He just couldn't take the punishment, and that's the history of boxing. You got some of the biggest punchers in boxing couldn't they can dish it, but if you can take it and you can dish it back on them, you was gonna beat them. You know, and that was the story of Foreman and Ali. He took it and he dished it back on him, and you know, Big George was tired. It was hot as hell that day too. You know, that's Julian Jackson. Hey, if, if you can take Julian uh, power, you can catch Julian before he catch you. you get him. You know, that's the that's the that's the history of a lot of punchers in boxing. A lot of them can dish it, but a lot of them can't take it. And if they can take, if you find a guy that can dish it and that can take it and put it back on you, you in grave danger. <laughs> Those are a rarity in boxing. Buster Douglas found out, even though they say Mike was bullshitting in camp and all that. Buster Douglas found out I can take it, and I dish it back on Mike. Mike couldn't take it. You know what I'm saying? But Rosario don't have no punch resistance. And like I said before, I think this fight was better than I anticipated that 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 Rosario would do. I didn't think he would hang around so strong so long, but I did pick the fight in the eighth round. Yeah, buddy, got that one right. And um, I didn't think he was going to hang around so, so strong so long. I, was, I expected the championship rounds. I mean, right before the championship rounds, he would be stopped. I just thought Charlo would turn it up. He didn't get a chance to turn it up. You know, he did drop Rosario. Was it the round before that? He dropped him. He, Rosario just can't take no punches. You know, when Gallimore hit him with that left hook in his American debut, I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't gather up the courage to pick him or bet on him, even though the odds was good. I couldn't gather. I couldn't gather up the courage. His his tape was too inconsistent, and and when Gallimore hit him with that left hook, and Gallimore one of the biggest punchers in the division, but he never recovered. And I say Charlo gonna clip him with a left hook. He gonna hit him. He couldn't take that left hook, even though Charlo ain't no puncher. Even though he with Derrick James, he's he's masquerading or he's posing as a puncher. He's not a natural puncher. Rosario was a natural puncher last night. Rosario was the one that you know he he it was no effort. When Rosario threw his punch, there was no, you know, he wasn't winding up. He wasn't telegraphing. He was just hurting Charlo just by touching him. Charlo got to wind up and, and, and he has to generate power. And it, it's not natural. And he benefits from being in a division where there's no elite talent. If there was another elite talent, you know, like a Crawford or, or a Spence or a Taylor or, you know, I'm not I'm just saying those elite level talented guys, Loma, you know, those, if he had a guy like that, a Fury, a better BF in his, in his division, it'd be very telling. A guy that can take it, that can dish it, that can box. In his division, everybody has flaws in that division. Before I get there, let's finish this up. You know, the last, you know, he, I think he dropped him before in the seventh, in the beginning, or, or the sixth, he dropped him again. I think he dropped him three times in this fight. The sixth, he dropped him again, I believe. All right, because I had Rosario winning second, third, fourth, fifth. He got dropped in the first to six. The seventh I gave to Charlo because um, Rosario was trying to get his legs back. You know, but he did some good work. Then you come out in the eighth. You know what's so funny about it? If anybody go back and, and watch the film on Line Killer Podcast and that stream we did with Nate and Antoine Eccles, shout out to them. I said, if Charlo jab, Charlo need the jab to the body. I said it. Now, when I said it, I didn't think. That jab into the body will result in a knockout. I swear to God, I said, I think, I think when he was a little bit trouble, it had to be about the fifth to sixth round. I said it. I said he need to jab to the body, and that and that will make Rosario kind of reset, and it set up something big over the top. Well, he jabbed to the head and jabbed to the body, and I don't know if Rosario it was a punch that he didn't see coming. Or his muscles were relaxed. Nate said he was breathing in or breathing out and he got caught. Charlo, I heard, said after the fight, he probably had an injury from camp, a core issue. But that was one of the strange knockouts that I've seen. Some people say flop. Some people say it was a dive. I just I just think he caught him with a, I think he caught him relaxed. And it's kind of like the Josh Taylor knockout. Josh Taylor hit a Kong song on a spleen and he was on the canvas for like 50 minutes. I'm exaggerating, but... You know, Rosario, when Coach Paul said he's doing this, that, and the third, and, you know, I think a lot of, it turned a lot of people off the way that fight ended, you know, you know, with, with Rosario, you know, tw- twerking on the, on, the, on the canvas and doing all this and going into, I don't know what it was, 
But I think it turned a lot of people off. The fight was really good. I think it, it, it exceeded my expectations. Um, you know, and I think the ending of the fight kind of turned people off. And, you know, in my opinion, it was a good fight. Rosario was dominating when he didn't get dropped. But like I said, a lot of punchers in boxing, those tall, linky-ass punchers that can dish it out, a lot of times they can dish it, they can't take it. You know what I'm saying? And Rosario was just one of those guys who don't have no punch resistance. And, you know, I think he's going to have a hard time getting top fights again in this division. But like I was saying about the division, but congratulations to Charlo, ring belt, lineal champion, WBC, WBA, IBF champion. He definitely deserved it. But like I said, he doesn't have another elite foe in a, a, in a division. People thought Lubin could be that guy. I don't think so before the knockout. And he doesn't have a, a, a Triple G or Canelo or Jamal or he doesn't have a Caleb or, or, or he doesn't have that elite opponent. And what's so interesting about 54, that's the problem. He doesn't have an elite opponent that it's a gift and it's a blessing for him and it's a curse. Because you don't have that elite opponent, you can't make that big money fight. And I don't know how many big money fights have been made at 54. It have to, I only really could think off top of uh, Oscar and Mayweather and Mayweather and Canelo. That's the only reason ones I could think of. I could be wrong. But he doesn't have an elite foe. And I think that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a gift and a curse. And what I mean by that, I think an elite fighter beats him. You put him in there with a, like, if he has a Crawford or Errol Spence to his Crawford, I'm not saying those guys in particular, but he had another guy that y'all see that's on his level, Canelo, Triple G, you know, Benavidez, Plant, you know, Fury, Wilder, Joshua. If he had one of those elite level fighters in his division, you know, in you are, Casimir, Casimir, I can't pronounce his name for nothing. He won last night and he had a Heyman boxing hat on. Somebody explain me what Heyman boxing is, but um, I think he'll lose. I think Charlo, 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 if he fights somebody elite, which it ain't nobody elite at this division, everybody got a hole. Harrison got uh, a stamina chin issue. You know, you look at J-Rock, he got a chin issue. We're going to talk about him in a minute. Um, who else? You got Lubin. We're not sure he that guy. You know, you had Rosario, good puncher, ain't got no jaw. You know, he bought B. Trout, he getting old. I mean, Lara, good fighter, kind of old. And predictable, you know, Brian Carlos Castanos, good pressure fighter, you know, but just lacks some pop, you know, to share a strong fighter, just to lack some elite, some elite level skills, you know, Jer her big fighter, you know, just a punching bag until we kind of, you know, get his skills going. So everybody here, you know, in this division, even they, they, they have a big flaw. There's no elite fighters in this division. So if he goes up to 160 and, you know, his brother leave and Triple G leave and Canelo leave. He's going to be facing the same issue. There's there's no elite talent right now at those divisions. It's going to, have to be some prospect or some unforeseen guy. But I do think his elite fight is probably going to be Demetrius Andrade at 160. To be honest, there's no there's no elite fighters that's probably going to be willing to fight him from 54 to 60. You know, he might have to get a welterweight to come up. Sean Porter, I wouldn't say he elite. Terrence Crawford. But right now, you know, he's dominating the division. But there's no elite fighter that can really get him over the top. And if I think he fought an elite, complete fighter, he will lose. Because last night, the difference was Rosario couldn't take the punch. And that's that's credit to him for having a strong chin. But he was he was hurting. He was hurting Charlo. He was putting it on Charlo. And um, he was dominating Charlo when he, could, when, he, when he couldn't take the power. He put him in there with an elite level fighter. Uh, and there's no no one that's, I think, going to fight him. I think he, he, he'll lose. There's so many flaws in this game. But... His stamina, his jaw, his determination, get him by. And if, if I'm his coach, um, we stay in at 54 for a while. And then I go to 60 once everybody clear out. So he's a good fighter, but there's a lot of flaws there. Rosario was dominating the fight, but it just turned out Rosario couldn't take it on the chops and he couldn't take it to the body. So, I mean, you know, y'all want to talk about J-Rock or the IBF mandatory? J-Rock can't fuck with that boy. J-Rock, he told me, I'm going to be two-time champion. You can't beat him. You ain't got the jaw. You ain't got rid of Bredman. You know, you 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 ain't, you ain't you can't beat him. You can't beat him. There's no way, no how. You know, he got skills, and I just don't see him beat him. You know, he can, he can, he going to have to approach, you know, Jamil like he approached her. He going to have to, you know, he had to beat Jamil on the inside and push Jamil back. But he going to get clipped. You know, J-Rock is a great all-around fighter. But I just think he lacks power. But I mean, one thing I think he lacks a lot is the, is the defense. If his defense was a lot better, I'll give him a chance. But 
he going to take the he going to beat Charlo on the inside. And then again, Charlo got a good left hook on the inside. I just don't think I don't think anybody at 54 can beat him. I think Estano's got a good style to beat him. Um, it's just can Estano's take the power? I think he can. I think Estano's and Charlo for a four belt unification, five plus the ring. I think think that fight is going to be uh, even more exciting than this fight with Rosario because I think Castanos is going to be able to take a bigger punch, and I think Castanos brings pressure. Somebody, somebody, it's going to be an exciting fight. So hopefully Castanos can beat Teixeira. I believe it will. And if they ever get to an undisputed fight with Castanos and Jamel, I think that is going to be a better fight than you ever seen Jamel in. It's it's going to be a barn burner. So let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, cry, response, your video request. Don't forget to check out our fight reaction playlist for more videos like this. If you want to check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those links in the description. We also got a Facebook group. So if you want to chop it up with me, if you got business question, cry, response, your video request, hit those links in the description. Want to make a donation to the channel, uh, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313 Appreciate everybody do donate. PayPal link in the description. Appreciate the love, support. Best way to donate is to share the video. One time for the one time we gone.